Welcome to Transmissions, where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third-party Transformers. On this episode, we've got some HasLab prototypes, new legacy rumors, and discussion on the latest Rise of the Beast Studio Series pre-orders. Today is Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, and this is episode 523 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that was in the running to replace the M&M spokes candies, but it all fell apart because Daryl only eats the ones with W on them. I'm yours, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how's it going? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. How you doing? Let's talk Transformers. As always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who support us on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you all so much for continuing to help us out and keep the show going. We really appreciate it. And if you are not already a Donatron and would like to become one, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. And that's where you can sign up. It's right there. Uh, of course, uh, you, if you become a Donatron, you get some benefits, get some additional extra content that's only available to our Donatrons. You get merchandise at the higher levels and, and other cool benefits. Uh, one of the bonus shows that we do uh, every couple of weeks is We Like Big Bots. And that's nice. done by our big bot down there, Daryl, and Dr. Pants. <laughs> so, uh, Daryl, we, we have a new episode of We Like Big Bots coming out uh, this week. This is, I think this is episode 10, right? Episode 10? Yeah, yeah, 10. Yeah, we did it. We're done now. <laughs> you, you haven't filled your year commitment. <laughs> so uh, you, you want to give us a teaser? What's what's happening this week on We Like Big Bots? Oh, yeah. We we like Big Bots. Uh, Dr. Pants and I, we, uh, we're we taking a look at a figure that uh, I think uh, has, has, I mean, it's gotten a lot of play over the last uh, year or so. Uh, so I don't think the name is going to surprise anybody. We're not uh, breaking any new ground here, but... Uh, it's 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 one that's uh, pretty fun. I think a lot of people uh, really enjoyed this figure. So uh, we take a look at this one and uh, and the iterations, the other iterations, official and non-official, that uh, uh, both he and I have in our collections. It's uh, it's pretty fun and uh, it may consist of uh, two figures. It might be a combiner of sorts. So it's not uh, not a, a, a traditional combiner, and it's uh, yeah. So it's it's kind of fun. Uh, we like it. It's. Uh, we like big bots, and this is definitely qualifies as one of those. We, we might be talking about that figure tonight. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at the I think I'm not sure. I can't read too um, good though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you are a Donatron, you will have access to the latest episode of We Like Big Bots on our Patreon page. Should already be up there as this show goes up. Uh, the episode should already be available in your Patreon page, uh, so you can go find it. It's uh, it just links to our YouTube video, so check it out uh, and enjoy. Give some, give Daryl and Doctor Pan some feedback. What you think on the latest episode of We Like Big Bots? Mm -hmm. Are you guys taking suggestions? Like, to, should listeners throw up uh, suggestions about the next bots you should cover? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we've, we've gotten a couple, we talk about them, um, uh, you know, off air when we, we get together and, uh, there's definitely a few of them that have come up. And, uh, I mean, one suggestion really early on was to do uh, fortress Maximus, uh, which is very cool. I'd love to do fortress Maximus. Unfortunately him, uh, both, uh, Dr. Pants and I all both have the same figure. Uh, mine's Japanese version. His is the Hasbro version. So we really don't, we can't talk about this, you know, a lot of different, you know, variations of it. Although I do think I have a Kabaya <laughs> kit one. So, I mean, I, I could was... do that one. <laughs> so, but uh, really that's bot. about the extent of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, that's a good one. And then we're, so we love taking suggestions and, and, and all that kind of stuff. It all depends on whether we own the figures or not. Right. So, and, and we have enough to actually, you know, constitute an episode. So, you know, um, yeah, it's 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 fun. I, I you know, both he and I own a sig substantial amount of toys, so it's it's pretty easy to to get in there and and, and do a bunch of different uh, uh figures. 
Um, so yeah, we've got gotten a couple suggestions that uh, will likely turn into episodes, and uh, we're always looking for more suggestions for sure. All right. And uh, next up, we've got our Transformers live play RPG podcast, Empire of Rust. And this week, episode 94, Docking Bay 94, is now available on the Empire of Rust free feed. So uh, if you are a listener to Empire of Rust, you've got a brand new episode. Came out this Monday, so it should already be in your podcast feed. So you can find that at transmissionspodcast.com slash rust. And uh, this episode has a, has some revelations, I'll say. So uh, check it out and uh, let us know what you think. And uh, also that this was the last episode. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not this close to 100. You want them to go out on episode 94? <laughs> yeah i mean marvel did it with amazing spider-man they stopped at 94 <laughs> well marvel doesn't care about accurate numbering anyway it's like <laughs> legacy numbering now that's all it's that's what they do yeah <laughs> no i i know uh I, I think mike teased it the last time he was on but they are gearing up for episode 100 of empire of rust that's coming in uh, in a few months so uh, look forward to that episode 100 daryl listen to this one <laughs> we'll see <laughs> I really make and, it worth uh, <laughs> we're not paying you to listen to our own content Daryl <laughs> <laughs> no just talk about me for the whole time that's all I need that's, oh, that's what they do every week or every time really pad really pad my ego <laughs> it, it's all about you Daryl you, oh, you, you haven't checked it out <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I got some really every, every, I got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> every character is Daryl. All the villains are Daryl. <laughs> wow. Really nailed my split personality. <laughs> All right. Also, a uh, just a, a little a tidbit. I was invited on the Toycast podcast that, that's on the Geekcast Radio Network with TFG and one Mike. Uh, he does the origins episodes going through, uh, you know, different guests and their origins with uh, toys and what toys they fell in love with as kids, what they still collect these days. Uh, I believe Daryl's already been on and Dr. Pants has already been on. I think Mike, yep. uh, Mike uh, Ordway, our Mike, not TFG one Mike, but our Mike has yep. been has been on. Um, yeah, he did I think origin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think Apollo is going to be on soon if she's not already. And then uh, Jeremy, you're on, you're up next. I think that he's looking. The TF, TFG one Mike has made it known. He's yeah. he's collecting all the all the transmissions podcast hosts. So uh, yeah, just, stay tuned. I think he wants to get the whole Funko Pop collection of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that yeah, that was a fun time. TFG one Mike is is a great guy and uh, had fun going through. He he had a he has a four a list of forty two questions about toy origins and toy collecting. And uh, I I went through the gauntlet and I survived. So uh, enjoy that episode. That uh, that should already be out as well. We'll have a link in the show notes and uh, you can check that out. All right. Uh, last thing before we get into toys, uh, it's the end of the month. So, or I guess now it's the beginning of February, but it is as we record this, it's the end of January. So, we're doing our toy hacks drawing. Of course, this is a perfect opportunity to remind you that we have a partnership with toyhacks.com. So, you can use our code TM1234 at toyhacks.com to save 15% off your entire order. Uh, it cannot be used with any other promo codes, but can be used with robo points. So uh, if you have some saved up at toyhacks.com, you can use those and then get the additional 15% off with our code. So remember, that code is TM1234. So now a lucky listener is going to get a $10 gift code from toyhacks.com with this drawing. Uh, I remind you, that all our Donatrons are automatically entered into this contest every month. Uh, but of course, if you don't have to be a Donatron to enter, you can just send an email to contest at transmissionspodcast.com saying you'd like to be entered for the month and then at putting in a picture of the 
Transformer toy you'd like to get some stickers on. So it doesn't uh, have to be the actual one you would use, but <laughs> <laughs> any Transformers picture yeah. will do that of a toy you own. Okay, so uh, we didn't get any any additional contest entries this month, but uh, all our donatrons are still on there. So we're going to go ahead and pick a winner. And this is uh, the $10 gift code for the month of January 2023. So Jeremy is your assistant ready to help us out. Computer, are you ready? I'm ready when you are. All right. If she could please give us a random number between 1 and 81. Computer, give me a random number between 1 and 81. Here's a number between 1 and 81. It's 20. 20. And that goes to Chrono Crater. Congratulations, Chrono Crater. Awesome. Nice. Very good. Congratulations. That's a new name. He is, or he or she, I'm not sure, actually, is a, um, they are a, uh, have been on the Discord, and they are a big Empire of Rust listener. So congratulations, nice. Chrono Crater. Right on. Uh, you've got uh, some $10, $10 to spend at toyhacks.com. So enjoy that. I will be in touch. Eventually. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, I think that uh, gets all the intro stuff out of the way. So let's move on and talk about some toys. We're going to start it off with some Hasblab. <laughs> you're way too uh, much into that this yeah. <laughs> it's a rocking theme <laughs> yeah right on okay so uh we are going to start off with some hasblob like charles said and we have got uh some prototype images because they exist and uh, ended up on ebay this past week so first up we have some images of Haslab Victory Saber and the prototype of that figure that uh, was put up on eBay. And uh, it's uh, it's blue and green. So, yeah, uh, interesting. It's not, uh, you know, uh, it's it's not every day you get to see the prototypes of these figures. Um, this thing uh, did not sell. The auction is over. Um, and it uh, it was listed at $2,400. And it uh, it didn't sell. Whoa. It's, a lot, it's a lot of money. I don't know why it didn't sell. Um, so it, uh, it looks to be complete with all the stuff that, uh, you know, it, it came within its box, uh, except, uh, I don't, well, is the, uh, did it come with, uh, maybe it didn't come with the, uh, the little mini cons, but everything else that was, was there. So yeah, that's, uh, it's very cool. And if you're a prototype collector, then this kind of stuff really gets, you know, gets you going to see. Um, I, I always kind of wonder if, you know, these are uh, legitimate prototypes or they're just kind of like the people at the factory throw some uh, colored plastic in the in the molds when the, the run is done and then just kind of take home uh, whatever they can get. And they say, oh, prototype. And then they sell it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it looks um, it looks like the final version in terms of quality of the mold. Oh, sure. So, yeah. yeah who knows? I personally, I think it Hasbro wouldn't get let one of these get away. And it doesn't have the the number stamps that Hasbro puts on all their prototypes, because mm -hmm. the ones that they've shown off on the streams they've said have these numbers and they can track it down to sure. exactly like who had it. Yeah. So it, this might just be they had some extra green and blue plastic and run off their own victory saber. Yeah, I mean, if you were left alone in a factory that made transformers, uh, wouldn't you do that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I totally would. I would also not take the pictures on the white background because these are horrible <laughs> pictures. <laughs> I, I will harp on that every single time. These are horrible. Like you're gonna have like light primary colors. Don't use a bright background. 
it's washed out. Why, yeah. Yeah. Why does why does their tarn the they they show a picture of tarn to scale? Their tarn has like four fusion cannons. Well, and it has like extra feet. Yeah, I was oh, counting yeah. the feet. He's got uh, oh, um, are those, those shockwave, shockwave feet? feet? I yeah. think so. Leg or um, yeah, he's side, wearing shockwaves uh, arms and stuff on his back too. So he's kind of like, uh, he's all powered up. That's interesting. <laughs> Didn't even notice that. Good eye. Um, anyway, so this thing exists. It's out there, and it's uh, it's over two grand, which is ridiculous. So yeah, I, I don't, you know. It may or may not be an official prototype, but uh, you know, doesn't really put off the uh, the allure of a, a real one. Um, speaking of prototypes, we got another one here. This is a prototype of Unicron, so Haslab Unicron, the one that came out a while ago. Uh, this thing also showed up on eBay this past week, and uh, this one here is on eBay for five thousand five hundred dollars, just because it's bigger. Um, and it, it's sold. <laughs> so <laughs> this thing was originally listed for 6,500 and it appears to have been, t- uh, bought at 5,500. So they, the guy took a significant discount, uh, to sell it, um, you know, a grand off. Uh, so the images of this thing, there are a bunch of different images to, to, to see, um, not not as many as the the victory saber, but still, I think Jeremy's onto something with that uh, that number stamp because this one also seems to be lacking that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it is a uh, it is a Unicron, and it is in multi pastel colored plastics. Um, so it's 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 possible that it was just kind of uh, run off at the very end of the thing, and then whoever did it has just been kind of holding it on. Um, to, you know, to sell off when they had a chance. And it sounds like they have now. Um, this yeah. one's on a white background, Jeremy. I know. I, I appreciate that. They they have a <laughs> nicely dark gray carpeted stairs as their background. And yeah, I, I think that it makes the picture pictures better. Um, I mean, the, the dark gray of one of the rings does kind of blend in a little bit, but better than a blinding white background. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I wonder if like the people that did this, maybe they did run off some extra stuff and just kept it until they left the job, and you know, then sold the stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting to see this. I mean, the fact that it's sold is is crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody out there wanted it, wanted a prototype of Unicron, and. Uh, I mean, like I said, with the uh, uh, the victory saber, whether it's a uh, official or not, um, it's been sold, so it's out there on the market now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's what we got for Hasblab. All right, and uh, let's next we'll move on to quick hits. All right. Uh, first thing that we're going to uh, talk about in quick hits is uh, it happened yesterday. It, uh, the Hasbro Pulse fan stream uh, where they announced, uh, I'm guessing, Rise of the Beast Studio Series stuff, but I, I don't know why I would know that. Um, anyway, um, it, it's obviously happened after we recorded this and before we released it. So we'll be talking about it next week. Oh, it's Thank you, uh, Charles, for putting that up on the screen. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, I- I'm excited to see what they're going to show off. And uh, next week, hopefully, we'll have a discussion full of new figures to talk about. And Hasbro, if you could if you could do your, your streams on uh, Fridays next time, so then we could catch them and get them up on on the next episode that'd be great thanks do a nice saturday afternoon stream no one's at work <laughs> <laughs> you know we love PulseCon because it, it goes over the weekend <laughs> okay next up uh we've got some listings for upcoming 
Transformers Legacy figures. This comes from Big Bad Toy Store, and uh, apparently, and I, I think we already had rumors of this before, but apparently we're going to get Twin Cast and Metal Hawk as new Legacy figures coming very soon. So Twin Cast, of course, is a repaint of Blaster, so it's likely to be a, a repaint of the existing Legacy slash Kingdom Blaster. And then Metal Hawk could potentially be a brand new mold, where Metal Hawk is the pretender, Japanese pretender uh, from G1 back in the day. Also, Metal Hawk had a significant role in the IDW comics uh, in the mid 2000s, uh, mid 2010s, I should say. So, um, also, uh, it's probably unlikely that Metal Hawk will have a pretender shell or any kind of pretender gimmick, but I guess we'll see. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be another like, um, you know, uh, core class pretender character like we've already gotten with a couple of Decepticon pretenders in the past uh, for Legacy. But, uh, oh, no, I think this these are listed as Voyagers. So this is not going to be a, a core class figure. So these are both mm-hmm. going to be Voyagers. Uh, so uh, Blaster or Twin Cast, of course, will be bla- uh, repaint of Blaster. But Metal Hawk might be something brand new. So. I'm calling my shot. It will have some sort of gimmick, like referencing the Pretender. Okay. I have a feeling they're going to reuse the uh, uh, Jaxus mold. In really? Some, in some capacity. It's, mm. I mean, it's a weird jet thing. Uh, and and those designers, they're clever guys. They uh, They can figure out ways to kind of you know, use a, a transformation sequence, uh, you know, to kind of hide different ways to, you know, I mean, Metal Hawk's a jet, you know, the original was not a great looking jet, but it was a jet. Um, and then the, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you might be able to figure out a way to get that to work either, either that one, or, uh, I mean, yeah, no, the other one wouldn't work cause it's a deluxe. So yeah, I, I think, uh, I think the, the best bet is the Jaxus mold. They could, they could, remold some parts and, and slim them down a bit for metal hawk because jax is really bulky up top right so mm-hmm. yeah i think they could they could slim them down a bit but yeah that looks cool i'm more concerned about what happens to, to a big bad toy store because uh you know you get leaks from walmart and stuff and 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 hasbro is not gonna you know do anything to walmart because they need that they need those guys yeah, they don't uh, have the know, leverage there yeah, but BBTS is small potatoes by comparison to to Walmart. So, or to to ha- for Hasbro to come down on them. So, I'm sure there's was a, a strongly worded email sent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's the rumor. So we'll see. And my topic is the, about masterpiece Skyfire. So MP57 has been spotted and is in hands. So it is starting to uh, to ship. Um, this thing is a big Mamba Jamba, and it, uh, it looks really nice. Um, so it's nice to see it out there. Uh, you're getting Skyfire with three, uh, what is it, three, four? Uh, yeah, it looks like three little micro uh, dudes, and this is the uh, Jazz uh, Wheeljack and Optimus Prime, and then they kind of, they're just scaled to, to kind of go with them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, it looks really great. These, uh, this, uh, this Skyfire figure, um, I, I can't help but compare them to the fans toys Phoenix cause they're in the same kind of scale. So they're both masterpiece scale. Um, and it's interesting to, uh, to kind of put them side by side. I mean, obviously this post is not doing that, but it, it will be interesting once somebody actually does it. Um, I like it. I think it looks good. Um, yeah, this is a really nice looking figure. The people who have uh, pre-ordered this are probably in for a really fun time with it. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks great. And uh, I'm excited to start to see it in person because I'm sure a bunch of, uh, vendors will have these at TF cons. Um, yeah. And additionally, there are more masterpiece, uh, uh, in hand images. And, uh, this is the masterpiece MP 48 plus dark Amber Leo prime. Uh, that's a lot of, a lot of names for that, that figure. Um, this is, uh, this is Leo, Leo prime or Leo convoy, I guess. I mean, this is him in uh, nemesis prime colors. 
you know, if you didn't know you wanted a Nemesis Prime or a yeah, a Nemesis colored Leo Prime, this is uh this is your chance to get one. It's it's it it looks pretty good, I gotta say. This is the uh a color scheme that just works on a uh, on an Optimus Prime figure, and uh why not throw him on a uh throw it on a on, on a lion? So yeah, I think it looks great. It's uh, it's they got him here standing next to his uh, his Leo Prime uh, regular colored counterpart, and uh, amongst the uh, the the Beast Wars uh, team of uh, of Predacons, I guess uh, Destrons would be. I, I I don't know what they called them. Yeah, in they that, were Destrons. But, yeah. So yeah, I think they were Destrons. So yeah, and it looks it looks good. He looks really good in that color scheme. Uh, I mean, Jeremy, I'll just get a quick comment from you since this is kind of your thing. Uh, thoughts on uh, on the Nemesis color scheme on uh, the Leo Prime here? In robot mode, it looks great. The uh, the image we have here of the lion mode, I don't know what's up with the face. Like, it, it just I think the there were comments about the regular color, the the face of the lion, but yeah, the paint job, it looks kind of off to me. But other than that, I mean, the robot mode looks spectacular. I'm I'm a big fan of of the what they're doing here. The metallic sheen on the paint it looks really good yeah the, the lion face on leo convoy has the has the anime he suffers from the anime eyes uh, yeah thing because he because they got to be they got to be cartoon model accurate and that cartoon model for leo convoy in lion mode had those big anime eyes uh as mm-hmm. in the lion's face so it was it was not it was not a realistic looking lion Okay, that's all our quick hits, so let's move on to our main discussion topic. All right. Um, get this up here. We're talking about, in our main discussion topic, a um, new studio series Voyager class Cheetor from Rise of the Beast. Uh, this is a six and a half inch uh, Cheetor figure. Um, not sure what that is in your your space points, Daryl. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, uh, sixteen. You said six and a half inches. Yeah, that's sixteen and a half centimeters. Okay. Um, so it, it is Studio Series ninety eight. Uh, is the number, and it comes with. Uh, two combinable spear accessories and uh, the backdrop for this one is the Peruvian jungle discovery scene. So um, it is, I mean, pretty nice in the, the cheetah mode. I, I think the, I mean, it's, it's okay. It very, whereas like with kingdom, the cheetah we got there, they fully made it look like a real cheetah in the, um, the alt mode this one you have you know robot pieces everywhere his tail looks kind of like a chain um and i don't know if that the hands are mistransformed or what but that's really weird looking with the the whole hand kind of sticking out from the paw i don't know uh but the robot mode looks solid and except for the face that i have issues with the face but the rest of the robot mode looks pretty solid. It, it's this looks like a, a more serious Cheetor than what we've gotten in other fiction, whereas he, he is more of the Bumblebee replacement character in Beast Wars and stuff. But I I think this looks fine though. I mean, again, I'm not a big movie uh, like purveyor of the movie figures, but. I think if you are into the movie designs, this would be something worth picking up. Um, so, uh, Charles, let's get into your thoughts. What do you think of this? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of basically where you are, Jeremy. It, it's it's fine. Um, I mean, I I like the kind of robotic animal aesthetic. I mean, I think that's what we from what we saw in the trailer a few months ago. It looks like that's like where they're not going for realistic animals; they're going mm-hmm. for robotic animals, which is fine. I mean, I, I do I do take issue with like the hand, like the hands and the the robot hands and the and the cheetah feet. That yeah, that definitely is bothering me. For a studio and also, series class figure, it seems like yeah, that's, I don't know. 
and it's pretty the uh, the the legs are pretty gappy they're, like the front legs are very gappy uh for uh, on the cheetah figure where like you can basically see his entire robot arm there um yeah and i, I, I maybe it's mistransformed i don't know but mm -hmm. i i'm guessing since these are official hasbro images probably not um and uh, the also in the robot mode the uh, like if you go to the robot mode the feet there are very stubby there i mean it, it looks right. like it's just the 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 cheetah feet turned backwards but that yeah, yeah that, that that look doesn't look great <laughs> um yeah and the and the face on the head uh, i'm not a fan of that either but um it is a it's a i mean it's a pretty solid for a movie design that uh you know it's okay i mean i i'm if there if there are any beast like beast wars mega fans who uh like who collected all the beast wars like well I, we've got the number one beast wars <laughs> fan right right there um so we'll, we'll hear from him and him in a second but uh yeah i'm, I'm kind of uh i'm on the fence with the like the other the other the previous rise of the beast fi figures we've seen i thought have been pretty good and and pretty nice but this design is kind of just a it's a meh for me <laughs> Not great, not terrible. Yeah. I mean, one thing I just noticed, uh, I, I know I called out when we talked about the Air Razor, where she was missing her Maximal logo. He has it in his robot chest. And mm. I, I'm wondering why you don't get it with one studio series and you do it with the other. Um, but also just in terms of quality, and Daryl will go to you. Um, I don't know. This, this just seems like a step down in quality from what we saw with the studio series air, air razor. What are your thoughts? Um, well, I mean, as far as quality goes, I think it looks well made. Um, I'm talking about like the, the design of like, like what we're saying with the gappiness. And... Right. I mean, gappiness is just a, 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 you know, this is not, I mean, studio series is one thing. This is not masterpiece. Yeah. Um, so it's a step above traditional generations, quote unquote generations toys where it's just, you know, that is going to be kind of half assed. So it should be a step above that, but, um, it's not masterpiece. So you're still going to get, and you should still expect gappiness in it. They're just kind of, they're going to make it work. Um, and it, they're going to make it better than the, the generations line. Um, the face, I actually, I don't mind the face. I can see where they're going with it because it's definitely more of an animalistic fight face. They're trying to lean into the whole it, Cheetor, right? It does and resemble a, a cat. A, it's a cat face, right? Exactly. Um, in the um, in the picture we're looking at here with him in robot mode, the part that kind of gets me, and I can see what they're doing with it, is they're they gave him pecs. And they, they've turned, you know, I, I don't believe it's part of the transformation. I just believe it. I, I, I believe it looks to be part of the, you know, just the, 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 the robot mode. I think it's just a, a piece yeah. of the, the, the body there, but these pectoral plates that come down, it, it gives them a, a much more human form. And I, I guess I, I mean, I get what they've gone for. I just find it looks weird. And then you've got the, the ab crunch, the fake ab crunch thing uh, going on underneath it. So his, his torso is very human, um, you know, and, and so it's, it's kind of a weird look for me um, with him being, you know, Cheetor, I expected a lot more spots um, on him for his color palette. You know, you do see a lot of spots in his robot mode, you know, on his inner thigh and on his chest and stuff like that. And on the, uh, on his like, you know, bicep, but in the, uh, in the, the beast mode, you hardly see any spots. Um, and that would be the mode that I would want to see more spots in. On. Right. Um, there, there's lots so, of panels where you could do that. Right. Exactly. So, um, that's just a, a that would be a nitpick for me because he's, you know, he's supposed to be a cheetah. Um, so, but again, he's also an, you know, a 10 foot tall cheetah, you know, he's not hiding anywhere, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a problem <laughs> for, for this particular character. Um, uh, as far as quality goes, I think he looks, like I said, he looks well-made. Um, the transformation, I, I see the problem with the hands and I get it. 
it's 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 something that should have been kind of addressed um but perhaps there was no way to kind of do it like maybe they i don't know it's yeah. i mean i'm sure it's the engineering small thing is yeah so uh this is a figure that i likely won't be getting just because i just i'm i'm, I'm staying away from the 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 movie stuff as much as possible and then you know i say that and then i buy half the line <laughs> um <laughs> but uh this is this will be one that I can definitely try and uh, avoid just just because it's also a new Beast Wars figure. But I mean, I see what they're doing and I can appreciate the uh, the, the the lengths that they've taken. Um, you know, it's it's got to be tough designing yeah. new new toys, right? So you know, I don't really want to come down on them, but I I, I want to critique. Where well, I mean, yeah, we're not coming like down on the actual creators. It's just oh, I you did you did. It's on tape. <laughs> Roll the tape. Four, four months later, trips to the store. Daryl, oh, I accidentally <laughs> bought three stu- Cheetor Studio Series figures. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I, I am sure just, that they're going to be talking about this on the next on that fan stream on, that happened yesterday. So they, they will be talking about it yesterday, and yeah, likely we'll, we'll talk about it next week. But yeah, so it it is interesting, and I you know. I am just waiting for the movie itself to come out and and then I'll decide whether I want to get any of the toys. But I will say this, there's nothing that looks like it could um, you know, poke an eye out or anything, like some of the movie figures. So <laughs> there's an improvement. Mm-hmm. Okay, well that's all our toy topics for this week. So let's move on to trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. Okay, and Trips to Store is powered by our friends at T Public. So we have our Transmissions Podcast store at T Public. You can get some cool merchandise, including our shirts, like the shirt I'm wearing, shirt Jeremy's wearing, the shirt Daryl's wearing. No, not the shirts Daryl's wearing. No. Put it down, Daryl. It's okay. Put it down. <laughs> oh. Spider Man. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah you can you can get all our merchandise at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop and uh, look at all the cool somebody shirts did this there. week yeah yeah i yeah. bought a lot of shirts thank you Heck thank yeah. you yeah, yeah thank you to the person who who uh contributed there so yeah and that every sh- everything you buy through our link helps us out even if you don't, if you buy stuff at T Public that is not on our page, as long as you go through our link, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop, and uh, then you buy anything, anything you buy from T Public through that link will help us out. So you can buy our shirts, you can buy other shirts, you can buy non Transformer shirts if you want, anything you want. Just make sure you use that link. Don't go to T Public.com, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. All right, now let's show off the stuff we got this week, and we're going to start off with Daryl. Mm. <laughs> it's been a busy week, and nothing new came out for me. So The spot of I'm shame just, for Daryl. That's right. <laughs> so I'm just going to show off uh, something that I uh, kind of put together this week, just because I had all the pieces, and I thought, what the hell? I'll do this while I was sitting down here. I put together my Menasaur. So uh, there, there he is. Yay, a Menasaur is complete. All the guys did their thing, and I, I did put together the arms the way that you're supposed to. So I retransformed the arm uh, plate back into its, uh, you know, like solid piece. I stuck the full car on and then kind of transformed the arm into arm mode, I guess. And it fully separated, uh, you know, uh, the car. So I thought that's very cool how it did that. Very neat. So, yeah. And uh, it looks pretty good. I am I'm still not a huge fan of the cars being on the back of the legs. Uh, just you know, I want to see them. <laughs> that's how it was in the cartoon, Daryl and G1. That's how it was. <laughs> but the toy is not like that. That's what I want. I want to see the cars. And it seems like such a waste. You put the guy on the shelf. I'm like, oh, you only got two of them? No, the other two are on the back. Like, yeah, you so know. really, you just need the arms and... Um, and Menasaur, or Menasaur, Motormaster, yeah. Motormaster, yeah. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah. 
But mm. uh, yeah, other than that, it's a, it's a fun toy and it was a fun transformation and combining everything uh, on was not difficult. I did transform every, every uh, individual uh, figure by themselves just to see. And uh, they were fun. They're, they're, you know, nothing too difficult. Um, yeah. So it was pretty intuitive. Definitely something a kid could do. So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good figure. I, uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. So if you have Menasaur and you haven't put them together, go ahead and do it. Or if you've been chasing them down and need a one last piece to do it. Yeah. It's uh, it's definitely a fun little thing. And I still want to get the add on kit from DNA designs to kind of make them a little bit more accurate. So we'll see if I get that, but yeah, Menasaur, that's it. All right. I'm going to go next. And I got something from Hasbro Pulse this week. It was exciting. Uh, I got Tarn, Legacy Evolution Tarn. Oh, shit. So there he is. And, and it's you open. Might yes. The figure's <laughs> not in the box. That's because he's right here. Tarn, leader of the Decepticon Justice Division. Megatron fanboy, number one Megatron fanboy, got the double barrel fusion cannon to mimic his hero, his icon. And this is this is a great, uh, I mean, it's a Voyager class figure, articulation out the wazoo. It's got like legs, arms, hip swivel, uh, ankle tilts, everything you want. And the transformation is pretty cool, pretty intuitive. And uh, the, um, you know, the fusion cannon, the double fusion cannon, you can also make it into a sniper rifle. So it's a, it's got a, got a lot of playability here. And uh, you can scan the QR code on the box to get the tech specs on the website, on the Hasbro website. And it does say leader of the Decepticon Justice Division. So, uh, yeah, Comic Universe Tarn. Uh, never thought I'd see an official Hasbro Tarn figure. But here it is in my hands right here and yeah you've got the, the septicon symbol face there um i hope alex milne gets his soon i think he like hats off to you mr milne for the design for the of this character in this figure so uh yeah very cool you started it all what do the text specs say on his um like what's the level for his on like the tps reports <laughs> uh i believe it's uh competent <laughs> oh. uh, his, there was that one issue yeah <laughs> yeah his his beer his beer i think his bureaucracy rating is a 10 <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. firepower nine bureaucracy 10 But yeah, this is cool. I, I really like this figure. I got to, I messed around with them, played with them this weekend. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Look for and uh, I got another notification from Hasbro that another. So I I, I did I pre ordered this figure and another figure together, and they're sending them individually a week apart. Like I don't understand. You could have just sent them both, Hasbro. Why not? What if they don't have the other one at the same time? They should have. <laughs> should should you, they have made you wait until the second one came in? Um, and then you show no. off two things in one show rather than one thing in each show. And <laughs> yeah, they're, they're thinking about you. I would have. Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> I would have. I mean, I would have held the other was one the, anyway. When was the last time you've been in the 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 third place, like the spot, like the shiny spot? <laughs> That's not for me. That's not for me. <laughs> he has I know, I know. in the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I can't dominate everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. All right. Now, Jeremy, it's your time to shine. Well, I'm in the top spot. Wow. <laughs> you are. Okay. Yeah. I, I do have a new toy, but also it was Pinewood Derby time for my kid. And his Cub Scout pack. And this year we were doing an outlaw division where like parents and leaders could just enter something and doesn't have to be beholden to the same rules. And I, at the very last minute, decided I was going to do an Optimus Prime. And I spent like maybe 
15 <laughs> minutes on this <laughs> and it won. <laughs> It, oh wow! I, I cut out basically this section here, and then I painted it, and I even forgot to do the stickers that I got from Toy Hacks. But I have a bunch of logo stickers. But maybe next year I will modify it more. But basically, it's just I put weight on it. It's basically just a block, and it won. And I have this fun trophy that one of our leaders <laughs> made. So, oh, an award-winning Optimus Prime. Did every, did everyone recognize it as Optimus Prime? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, I, I at least some of the leaders did. I think some of the kids did too. But we'll, we'll it's not it's time. not accurate. You're missing some wheels. Yes, and, and my, <laughs> my kid pointed that out. So if I modify it next year, I will be adding some wheels, but probably making them where they're like they don't touch. They're like higher. A little bit but <laughs> my new toy this week um i i saw this at target a while like a few weeks ago and i was in target again and decided to check and see if it was still there and if it was i was gonna pick it up and i got my studio series sludge yeah, good for uh, you the, the box is all beat up but that's okay because he's not in the box he's freed oh and <laughs> th- this is a really good figure although transformation i didn't use the instructions and at one point he was just all completely splayed out <laughs> and i'm like how how the hell am i gonna get this into the dyno mode but i figured it out it's cool uh he's he's a very happy boy i, I like him so yeah so now i have Great. three of them um i, I imagine they're gonna do um a, a swoop who is snarl is the one that was like in one frame of yeah, the movie yeah. pretty much. So hopefully they'll do uh, snarl too. Cause I've never had a full set of Dinobots. So I, I am on my way and this is a nice big chunky boy too. It, it's um, it'll be nice on display with the others. So mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah. I'm happy with him. So. Nice. Oh, and, and the the neck makes it so satisfying, Ratchet. <laughs> so. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay, and uh, that will do it for this week's trips to the store. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right, we got a little bit of convention news. Take it away, Jeremy. All right. Um, Koto Bukia, is that how you say it? Um, uh, they are coming to TFCon Los Angeles. They are the ones that made the, um, the like humanized Optimus Prime and Megatron as anime girls. And they, the figures themselves are, ro- are coming out. Uh, Optimus Prime is coming out in, in the next week or so. And Megatron is coming out in February. So we were just in time for TFCon LA in March. I imagine they're going to have the figures as well. And mm-hmm. I'm sure you're going to be seeing lots of cosplayers as well, because th- these figures are just made for cosplayers to, to draw inspiration from. Um, but I think we, we've commented on these figures before. I, I, th- I think they look great. If you are a collector of, you know, these types of figurines, you know, they they are a great Transformers tie-in. I believe are they licensed? I think they are. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. So yeah, so that's cool as well. And yeah, so they will they will be attending yeah. in person. So I wonder if the uh cosplayer that's been showing doing pictures of herself as o- the Optimus, who is a dead knockout for the actual figure, yeah. will be the in attending. I don't know where she's huh. from, uh, but I, like I thought she was part of the company originally because I thought yeah. like this was a you were modeled after her. Yeah, but from what from what we've seen was. on the Twitter, I, I believe she's in Japan. I mean, okay, I, I believe most of her Twitter was in Japanese, but I'm not sure. Hmm. But the um, that would be cool. and and TFCon itself doesn't normally promote the uh, the vendors who are showing up. 
Right. So this is uh this is a pretty big get for them. If if they're if they're showing or putting out a a promotion like this for for a, a vendor who's coming, then uh this must be a pretty big deal. Yeah, I think they've done it in the past for some of the like 3A statues, like higher yeah. price things, but so it's probably on that level. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they um what they have to show off. Mhm. Mhm. All right. Well, that's all the convention news. So that takes us to the end of this episode of Transmissions. Uh, at the end of every episode, of course, we give a shout out to our Masterpiece Donatrons. These are the folks who contribute to our Patreon at the highest level. And that's why we appreciate them so much that we mention them in every episode. So thank you once again to John 4 x good and Demon Tech 82 we really appreciate your support. And that'll do it for this episode. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Later. Thank you for listening to this episode of Transmissions. If you'd like to join the conversation, travel to our Discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. Want some cool transmission swag? Feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. If you'd like to support our podcast, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.